What's up, guys? Brett Apley here from DailyFanMMA.com, coming at you with another UFC Quick Picks video for Santos versus Teixeira on the Mayo Media Network once again. Uh, make sure you're subscribed to the channel, guys. If you're not, do that right now. Hit the notifications bell. Mayo Media Network content coming out throughout the week. A lot of it, great stuff, including the Dogger Pass podcast, Cody Safdick, Paul Shaughnessy, those guys do an awesome job. Every week, I think the video came out Wednesday or Thursday for Santos versus Teixeira. So if you want full MMA breakdowns, you haven't watched that yet, check it out right now. Pause this video, go watch it, and come back here for some UFC quick picks. Of course, going to give you my favorite cash game play, tournament play, salary play, and my fade of the week. And let's start off with our cash game play. All right, guys. Last week for cash games, I gave out Kevin Holland at 8.2K. Um, I just felt like he was such an obvious play. You needed him in your cash game lineups to have any chance at a 50-50 or a head-to-head. -head. And you'd be surprised that, that not everyone watching these videos will understand those concepts, which is why I really felt it was important to give out truly who the best fighter was in cash games, um, regardless of ownership. Though I know there were a bunch of you who wanted maybe some... Uh, less obvious targets uh, across the board. So let's start up for our cash games this week. I'll give you a fighter who is a, a bit less obvious. Darren Elkins at 8.7K. I think he's a very solid cash game play on this slate. He's minus 245 to win against Eduardo Garagori. And look, Elkins is not a fighter that I'm necessarily looking to trust in 2020. He's been fighting for a long time. He's taken a lot of damage throughout his career. But even in his last fight against Nate Landwehr in 2020, you know, he's, he's proving that he can still at least fight at a high pace. Um, he didn't get hurt too badly in that one. So I feel like Elkins has a pretty strong stylistic matchup here against Garagori. Um, Garagori is just a relatively low level fighter. He got taken down four times by Humberto Bandanai in his UFC debut. And he got submitted by Ricardo Ramos in the first round in his next fight. And Elkins is a better wrestler than him. Elkins lands 2.43 takedowns per 15 minutes. Um, he also lands 3.54 significant strikes per minute coming off a, a loss in which he landed 121 significant strikes. So I feel like Elkins has theoretical advantages anywhere this fight takes place, especially on the mat. And I would project Elkins to land at least a couple takedowns in this fight, if not potentially dominate on the mat. So Elkins at 8.7K, you're not necessarily looking for 100 points here, that would be a tournament play. But in cash games, we're, we're looking for a, a fairly safe fighter to win and a fighter who, when they do win, is going to put up a fair number of points. So I expect that to be the case here. Elkins in a win, typically he scores well, and I'd be surprised if he if he scored less than 80 points, let's say, in a win. So 8.7K, Darren Elkins, minus 245 to win, plus 210 to win inside the distance. I think he's a strong cash game play on this slate. All right, moving on to my tournament play of the week. It's going to be Alexander Romanov at 9K, and, and he's just my favorite play on the board. I do expect him to be popular, but I expect all these fighters to be popular. Santos at 8.8K, Barcelos at 9.1K, Chikadze at 9.3K. My personal preference is Romanov at 9K. I think he has the highest ceiling on the slate. That's what we're looking for in tournaments. I don't particularly care about the ownership um, unless it's going to be like what we saw last week with Kevin Holland, 85%, 90%. Romanov's minus 430 to win now against Marcos Rogerio de Lima. And more importantly, he's minus 280 to win inside the distance, which is by far the best line on this entire slate. He's an aggressive wrestler, grappler, and Lima tends to slow down in fights. Lima's been finished many times, even in his last you know, several losses in the UFC. First round submission loss, first round submission loss, second round submission loss, and second round submission loss. So if Lima doesn't win this fight by knockout early, I expect Romanov to kind of beat him up and finish him in round two or round three or even round one. Um, and Romanov's coming off a UFC debut win over Roque Martinez in which he landed, uh, in, in which he scored 148 points on DraftKings with only four takedowns. He also recorded 10 advances on the mat which is crazy, 55 significant strikes. So this is a big, big boy, and he is an aggressive wrestler. That's what he's been throughout his entire regional career, and he's only fought once in the UFC, but I, I expect him to fight with that same tenacity, and I think he's going to have advantages on the mat, especially in top position. 
And the metrics back that up as he's minus 430 to win and minus 280 to win inside distance. So we're looking at a fighter here in Romanov who, A, fights with a style that scores well on DraftKings. And that's very important to me. Regardless of ownership, you want to be targeting fighters who, who fight in a style that scores well on DraftKings. And that's Romanov, a guy who's going to get you many takedowns, probably lots of significant strikes on the mat, and hopefully a lot of advances as well. He also has a, a phenomenal odds to win inside the distance, which is very important at that price. And he's also only 9K. It's not like we're having to pay up 9.5, 9.6K here. Um, he's $300 cheaper than Giga Chikate and $100 cheaper than Barcelo. So Romanov, I think, is very, very likely to put up 100 or more than 110 um, in a victory on Saturday, 9K. He is my favorite tournament play on this slate. All right, let's move on to my salary saving play of the week. And this week, it's going to be Glover Teixeira at 7.4K as the main event underdog against Tiago Santos. Teixeira is plus 200 on the betting line, Santos minus 240. And look, I don't love Teixeira in this matchup, but I do think he's a live underdog. I do think the betting line's a bit wide. And I think there's a realistic chance to share can win this fight. Uh, Santos is an explosive kicker. He'll have advantages on the outside. And I wouldn't be totally surprised if Santos kicks Glover in the face or knocks him out in the first seven minutes and, and wins this fight. I think Santos is a strong DraftKings play as well. But if we're trying to pay up for an, an Elkins or a Romanov or a Barcelos, Chikotse or multiple of these fighters, we have to save salary somewhere. And I think it's important to get exposure to the main event. Five rounds to play with. This fight is minus 375 to end inside the distance, which is a very high number. Uh, to share inside the distance is plus 320. And like I said, I do think when he gets on the inside, he's a better boxer. He's a better grappler. And he's coming off a win against Anthony Smith in which he scored 139 points on DraftKings. So um, I was very impressed with that. And look... Santos is coming off a loss to John Jones, and, and yeah, he was competitive there, but his last three losses, a uh, first-round KO loss to David Branch, a first-round submission loss to Eric Spicely, and a first-round KO loss to Gegard Mousasi. It's, it's not as if Santos has been some ultra-durable opponent throughout his entire career. I do think there's a chance that Teixeira can get him on the mat and finish him or, or hurt him in the pocket. And... I really think it's important to get exposure to the main event. 7.4K saves you a lot of salary. So Glover Teixeira, underdog in the main event, that's going to be my preferred salary saving play of this week. Finally, going to give you my fade of the week. And this week, that will be Tanner Bozer at 8.9K. And again, it's not like I hate Bozer. Um, I, he could be a sneaky contrarian play if you're playing 150 lineups in tournaments and you want to specifically attack a fighter who's going to be relatively low owned compared to their inside distance line. I, I don't think Bozer's terrible, but he's mostly known as a point striker and he's fighting an opponent in Andre Arlovsky who has been knocked out many times throughout his career, but not as much recently. And in Arlovsky's last one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten fights, he's only been knocked out once. So even past the age of 40, Arlovsky in his last 10 fights, nine of them have gone to decision and he doesn't absorb strikes at a high rate, only 2.69 significant strikes per minute. Bozer's, yeah, coming off a couple knockout wins, but his most recent win was a leg kick knockout. I don't really see that coming to fruition against Andre Arlovsky. And more importantly on DraftKings 8.9K, that's the, that's the only way. Bozer's going to pay off a price. And um, there's just too many other fighters in this range who I'd rather target. I'd rather target a Darren Elkins. I'd rather target Tiago Santos. I'd rather target Alexander Romanov. I'd rather target Hani Barcelos. And I'd rather target Giga Chikatse. So with a limited number of lineups, I just can't play everyone. Um, and that's unfortunately where Bozer falls off the list for me. And if I had 150 lineups to play with, then yeah, I would throw a small amount of Bozer in there because he is actually plus 155 to win inside the distance. That's not that bad. Um, I do think a knockout is in play, but again, he, he must, he must get a knockout to even have a shot at the optimal lineup. And then there's a chance that like Tiago Santos wins by knockout and Romanov wins by knockout and he gets beaten out anyways. So um, I just don't see this fight playing out at a super high pace. I don't think his chances of winning by knockout are that high compared to other fighters in this range. So 
Personally, 8.9K Tanner Bozer is just too expensive for me on this slate, and he is going to be my fade of the week. All right, guys, that's it for this week's UFC Quick Picks. Thank you so much again for the support. DailyFanMMA.com. We got all your UFC breakdowns, DraftKings breakdowns, uh, projections, rankings, full hour podcast this week, uh, betting hub in there as well. Um, lots of great stuff. DailyFanMMA.com. Make sure you subscribe to the Mayo Media Network. As always, notification bell. Please like this video. Um, comment below, too, who your favorite play of the week is. Been really interesting to see those comments over the past month. Um, who your favorite play is of Santos versus Teixeira. Best of luck in your contest, guys. We'll talk soon. Bye, everybody.